What's going on guys, Brian's here. Today is Wednesday, November 8th, 2023. The market is closed. I figured I'd hop on and record this video because this is something I only recently found out and it in a sense blew my mind that I didn't know about this a little bit sooner. If you're familiar with the uh, Analyze tab on Thinkorswim, you can come and check out your risk profile. And I decided to just isolate this spread I have uh, swinging into tomorrow. It's a combination of a iron fly that I opened earlier in the week, and then I added a long call butterfly. So this is just what the trade looked like. This is what it started off with. And then as the markets continue to rise a little bit higher, I opened up another one. And the combination of the two is referred to online as the uh, Batman spread because it looks like Batman. I'm assuming you guys know what the risk profile is. If you don't know, I have a couple previous videos on the Thinkorswim risk profile as well as the uh, risk profile on Option Strat, and they're both tools that are used to analyze options positions, most spe more specifically option spread positions because spreads tend to be a little bit more creative, we'll say, regarding how you structure them and you tend to mix different expirations, you can mix different spreads together and you can create a profile and without something like the analyze tab risk profile and think swim it can become a little bit hard to keep track of your positions as well as the PL on each individual spread so this is the current positions here i only have one left of each of these so this is the graph of the live positions in which i actually currently have running this is the PL right now on this position it's not 100 percent accurate right now because the market is closed and whenever the market is closed the options data is no longer accurate especially on the spx it's not until the market opens tomorrow will we get an actual read on this so there will be a little bit of a variation compared to option strat we'll see a little bit of a variation here but that's just because again it's pre it's after hours and that's what this magenta line looks a little bit uh, weird versus if we were to come over here and pull this down and see what our T plus zero line, you guys see that it actually doesn't match up. But again, that's because it is after hours and that is not entirely accurate, but that's not what this video is about. I just want to give you guys a little bit of an insight. If you're curious regarding the position itself, I opened this here on Monday at uh, 941. This is Eastern time. So about 11 minutes after the market opened, I wasn't really expecting much volatility for this week and then just expecting price to kind of chop around here in a positive gamma environment. I'm expecting a little bit of consolidation with price to drift towards some of the positive gamma strikes. So that's what we have happening. So again, the individual trade is not really relevant. What's pretty neat about this is I'm pretty sure all of you guys know about this slice right here. This is the current price for the SPX. So the closing price here today, that's what that is. And it's letting us know that's what the PL, as we can see, it just uh, changed here. Again, it's pretty weird right now after hours. But if I was to just slide this around, you guys can see this is letting me know, hey, if the SPX was at uh, 4440, this is how much this position would be down. It would be down $1,126. If the SPX was to pull back to here at 43.60, it's saying the position would be up $852. So again, it's one way to analyze the combination of these two spreads together. How is the PL looking? And as we move this right around, that's what we're getting the reflection down here. Another thing that is pretty common is if you come here and you actually reset your slices, you can get three slices on the chart. So one of them, if we zoom out by the faults, will have a plus 10% move. But sometimes I will generally pull this down. Let's just say we say a 0.5% move. And if we were to pull this down, if I'm day trading, I might be using something like this. So a negative 0.5% move. So if I were to come back here and zoom, the middle slice is letting us know this is the current price. So if the market was open, we'll see this bouncing around. It'll go up a little bit. It'll come down again as the SPX is going up or down. This price will be moving and these will also be moving plus 0.5% or plus or negative or negative 0.5%. It will be able to fluctuate with the live price. Right now, it's saying if the market was to pull back, this position would actually be up 800 bucks. Again, that's not entirely accurate right now. This magenta line, the T plus zero line, is a little bit skewed. This cyan line in the background is at expiration here tomorrow. So if tomorrow the market is up a half a percent, right here, this position will be up whatever this is right here. So I can hover my mouse and that's what you guys will see in this lower corner right here. It's letting me know that cyan blue color. It's letting me know this is max profit here. And then to the downside at this strike price here, around 43.60, the max profit is $1,400. What's pretty neat about this is if I were to actually clear this or we can reset the slices, but you can actually come here, you can come down to set slices and you can say, hey, I want to plot the break evens on my chart. So if I were to click this for this expiration, this is for tomorrow. It's letting me know right now using the T plus zero line tomorrow, if the SPX is above this strike price right here. So that's 4406. 
then this position will start to go in the red and then at the same thing right here on the short side four three four four if the spx was below here then my pnl will start turning negative as long as we were be between these two strikes my pnl will be above what's referred to as this zero line right here which is my break even at expiration however we see we have a couple extra strikes this is pretty common right here to know to do this and again you can enter in whatever you like you can unlike you can unlock this you can enter in your own number let's just say you want to use a stop loss and i might tell myself hey if the sps goes to 43 uh 30 that's my stop loss and i press enter it just put that level right on the chart and i'll say that's where i'm stopping on the trade it's letting me know down there i can expect a drawdown about 614 dollars i'm assuming again you guys have some sort of an awareness for this so let's just go back here and plot our break evens on the chart if i were now to come to my actual chart you guys can see that there are no lines on my chart this is just the candlestick so i just cleared it just for the purposes of this video if i were to come here now i can actually come to this same tab right here you can come down to set slices to charts and then I can send this to my cell. So I have multiple cells open, but I'm just going to send it to the first one, which is I have the SPX open right now. Once I click this, what it does, if I come back here now, is it actually drew the break evens on my chart. So that's 43.44 and two cents. 43 44 and two cents and then the same thing on the upside 4406 85 cents 84 cents 4406.84 that I did not know you can do. I used to draw these in manually, and then I would save different expirations for each different things. You guys can see I still haven't cleared these from earlier this year. If I was running a longer DTE iron condor, I will manually plot the levels on my chart, especially if I was doing a YouTube video. Let's just say I were to turn this one on. Uh, actually, let's just go back to this here. Let's go to the daily time frame so you guys can see. This is what it looks like right on the daily. But just to show you guys earlier in the year how I used to do it, this is an example of the short strike I would have, my short strike, my long strike. I would also sometimes put my break evens on the chart. I used to like to keep things uh, very uh, simple for myself. I am a person that like to I like to look at the chart as much as possible, even though I trade complex orders and spreads. I like to still have the information on my chart because it also means, let's just say I'm on my phone, I can pull up these levels and I can still see how my iron condor is doing, especially if I'm on the go, if I'm traveling and stuff like that. So that's just to show you guys an example of how I would do it manually. I, I would do it for calendars, iron flies, iron condors. It didn't matter to spreads. Sometimes even for a zero DTE trade, I will manually put in the levels and then sometimes I will draw uh, a level here just to give myself something to do while I'm waiting for theta to decay because most of these are theta positive trades. In other words, they're getting paid through the passing of time. So I'm not necessarily trading, you know, I'm expecting, I'm waiting for a breakout here to get long. It's not that style of trading. I'm just waiting for some consolidation and trying to profit. In this case here, I'm leaving this spread into tomorrow because the risk didn't seem that high for me. I already realized some gains for the week and then I decided to just let the last of this position run here and and maybe get a major win here tomorrow or at least walk away what I'm expecting to be about $450 which is somewhere in between here so I'll just demonstrate that one last time if we were to come up to our drawings and let's actually clear the drawing set so it's now clear boom there's no levels on the chart if I were to come back here and I want to plot my break evens all I'm coming here is just saying hey plot the break evens for tomorrow's expiration now they're here and then we come back here and we actually say send it to the chart so send it right here boom and there we go we have it on our chart we can actually also now say let's just say we were to come to set slices we can say let's set instead of our break evens maybe we want to let's um actually reset the slices and then let's use our points five percent up Let's use our points negative half a point down. And let's also clear our chart here. Come to drawings. Let's go to remove drawings, clear drawing set, wiping it clean. And now that we have these levels on our chart, we can do the same thing. Come here, go to send the slices to the chart. Boom. Now, as we check it out, there we go. We have this right here. This is the current closing price the last traded price on the spx and then we have this is the half a percent up this is the half a percent down to give myself a gauge so i know here is my max profit here's a pretty good profit target so if the spx is up here and it's hovering around here after the morning session i'll probably take some profit 
and we'll have an idea again as the market opens tomorrow when this is giving me a more live uh, accurate information for the PL. This can help gauge for structuring your trades if after you do your analysis you can then maybe call up with some you can come up with some color configuration for yourself maybe you use a different color for short-term dte trades then you can set maybe a different color for your longer dte trades and then you can have your slices right here on your chart obviously you don't need to have the live price so you can just remove this and then you can have an idea you can then come in here and change this and leave a note for yourself and say something like max profit right here and maybe give yourself the date so for november 9th i like to put some sort of a dash like that Put that right here, max profit, maybe change the color green for yourself, come up with a system again, there we go. So max profit for November 9th, same thing down here, change this, we can say max profit November 9th, show it on the right, make it green, it's about profit, press okay, and there we go. Now I know for the 9th tomorrow, anything in between here, SPX, that trade, I don't have to worry about it. I don't have to go to the risk profile. I already know it's going to be profitable. At these slices, it's going to be maximum amount of, amount of profit. I can then see how is my risk profile look for Friday because tomorrow is Thursday. For Friday, how does my risk profile look for some of my other swings for next week? I have some calendars. Let's see what I have left in my calendars. I'm going to uh, change this group over here, flip on the calendars, and there we go. So let's reset my slices again. So now this is pretty clear. So this is a swing position. I have four left of these. These expire on the 17th. So this is next week, Friday. Let me actually just close these out here. So we're just looking at just the counters. And then if I wanted to know what are the break evens, say for example, on this trade, same deal. I can then come here, add the break evens for the ninth for this particular position here, or I can change it. TOS has the uh, dates already built. Seems this is the day after the expiration for the calendars. If I were to put that on right there, I can then do the same thing. Let's go add these to the chart. And now when we come back to our chart, we can see this right here. So that's the range for my calendars up here and then up here. Maybe for my longer DTE trades, give them a different color, maybe something like this, a little bit less jarring, maybe make it a little bit of a thinner line because it's not as important. And then I can say something like count cal, cal break even and this would be for november 17th and we can say to the right there we go so now i have it and then you know do the same thing down here and it's just to wrap up the video i guess i'll might as well just complete it so i'll just copy this close it out come down here add this to the chart um, we made it two i use this color right here put that right there on the right boom so now I have an idea. Again, from my chart, this is the range for my calendars right now. Theoretically, this is my range for tomorrow. I can then take a look at my iron condors. I can then take a look at the iron butterflies that I might have running for next week. All the sorts of different spreads. And now you guys can see, obviously, you'd want to clean this up. You wouldn't want to get too crazy with it because these will fluctuate a little bit. Your break-evens at expiration won't fluctuate on uh, butterflies. But for calendars, break-evens will fluctuate based on uh, implied volatility. But it's good to know at the start of the trade, you can lock this on your chart. And then you'll have an idea, at least when you first open the trade, you knew what your break-evens were. So if you go back and you check the calendars and you see that the break-evens have contracted a little bit, which is something that might happen, you might tell yourself, hey, this changed too much maybe i don't want to hold this calendar anymore because the profitability zone is shrinking and there's multiple uses and there's multiple case scenarios that i'm pretty sure you guys can imagine i just wanted to expose this to you guys it blew my mind i just accidentally discovered it this week and i couldn't believe this existed and i've been using this risk profile for years and i never knew this was there i would manually draw all this in and it just took time and i ended up stopped doing that on my chart because it was just taking too much time manually doing this if you like this video if you enjoyed it if you learned something here and you've never seen it like the video share it and leave a comment down below thanks for watching guys catch you in the next one